Yo, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to a brand new programming video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to connect the front end to the back end of a website. So in this case, we are going to be connecting uh, a form using Flash WT forms. We're going to create, we're going to be connecting the form to a database, Flask SQL Alchemy. Uh, so we're going to be uh, sending data from a form uh, to the database. So we're just going to be uh, connecting the front end and the back end. And then we're going to be sending data from the database to the front end. So you're going to be learning about how to deal with requests in a, in a Flask web application, at least, and also a lot of routing and redirecting. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Um, and that is, uh, that is it. Let's just uh, jump right into coding. Okay, nice. So uh, what we can do now is we can just get started with the coding part. So, uh, first of all, I just wanted to show something that I found. So, uh, what I found was that you can just place the database um, in the working directory by just removing uh, one slash. So, just making it slash slash slash, not four slashes. Uh, and then you can just put the name of the file and it will just place it in your working directory. So, um, I'm just going to call this posts.db cool um and let's just make this double quotes all right yeah so that's just something that i found um another thing that i also wanted to add um before we get into actually connecting everything is uh i want to say that um we should probably add a script that will basically just create uh the database if it doesn't already exist so what we can do for that is we can import a module called OS, which as you can guess, stands for operating system. And what we can do is we can say, if not os.path.exists. So this will basically uh, check um, if this uh, file exists or not. And if it doesn't, hence the if not, uh, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do db.createAll. Now, in this exists, um, we're going to be looking for the file posts.db, because that's going to be our database file. And uh, yeah, that is that. That is it for, um, for that. Now, uh, what we can get started is with connecting the front end to the back end. So, uh, what we're going to do is let's just save that. And let me also just run uh, main.py before I forget. All right, nice. So right now what we can do is we can say, Joe, hello, post method is not allowed for requested URL. Okay. Um, now basically what this is saying is that uh, this method uh, is not allowed because we haven't actually worked with the backend yet. So what I'm talking about is basically if we go to templates and if we go to post on HTML, we'll see that we're using a post method, right? Which should post stuff uh, to the database or the backend or whatever, right? But it isn't because we're actually not handling the post request on the backend. So that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, what we're going to do is in this post post function we are going to say uh we are going to say we're we are going to basically uh try to uh, actually add the requests into our program so we can do that by first of all we have to import requests from flask and then after that we can scroll back down here and then we can actually add those requests. So in this app.route decorator, we can add a parameter called requests. And, um, or sorry, it's not called requests, it's called methods. And um, basically, we can add a list of get and post. And what, the, what, and what this will do is it will allow this uh this route or this function 
the take in any get or post methods. So uh, we can do that and uh, that shall work perfectly. All right. So that is that. Um, so that's what we're going to be using to actually uh, send our requests and um, get requests. Next, what we're going to do is we have to make sure that we're not like we're not just randomly just getting data from the post request and stuff. We're not just randomly doing that like randomly. Right. We want to make sure that we're doing that whenever the post request actually happens all right and we can do this pretty easily all we have to do is we just have to say um if request dot method is equal to post so that'll check if the post method actually came true then all we can say is wow github copilot is amazing um anyways uh what we can do is we can say if for dot validate on submit so basically that will say um if this form uh was um completely valid when the form was submitted then we're gonna run whatever code is in here so in here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say you name is equal to form dot nick dot data all right so basically what this is doing is it's setting variable called username you name and that is going to be equal to this form and inside this form um let me just open forms.py inside this form we have a uh it, we have a field called nick and whatever that person put in the nick field uh we want to get whatever we want to get the data in there right so that's why we do form dot nick dot data so this will literally just get whatever the user typed in in the nick field all right next we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do that for the text and boom copilot predicted it we're going to do text is equal to form dot text dot data and uh that should be good now what we can do is we can say Post. Oh my goodness, GitHub Copilot. I need to disable GitHub Copilot. Wait one second. Alrighty, Copilot has been disabled. Um, yeah, I just don't want it for uh, the video because you guys are here to learn. Um, anyways, uh, cool. So we are going to be creating a new post with the username equal to the U name from the form and then the text equal to text also from the form so what we have to do is the form it just it's literally just the front end right um we aren't handling anything with databases or anything yet really um so what this is going to do is it's going to create a new variable called post and it's going to create a new post that has the username you name and text text so this will actually create a um a new item in our database so we're gonna be trying to create a new item in our database each time the form is submitted um so that is what we are doing so post is equal to post username equal to you name just creates a brand new post in our database um we actually haven't added it to the database officially yet but this creates the new post um that has the the, the parameters of, or you can say from the form and then what we can do is we can say db so database dot session dot add post this will just add our post and then we can commit that so db dot session dot commit and boom our 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 data from the form has been added created has been added to a new post and that new post has been added to the database so that is literally it that is how you add uh that's how you connect the form to a database how to connect forms to database back end front end right so it's pretty nice uh, and it's as you can see pretty pretty darn simple um, so what we're going to do after that is we're just going to, so after we've added to, added it to database and everything, we can just return a redirect to slash, um, or the, or the homepage. Um, so basically, um, uh, I don't think I actually talked about redirect yet. So let me just import redirect. 
so read redirect uh it basically literally just um re redirects you to another page um or another url right so we just want to return uh we just want to um direct the user back to the home page so we can do slash or we can put in here url for and then we can put the name of the function that our home page is so home and yeah so we can also do something like that uh i'm just gonna do slash just because it's a little bit easier and yeah that is it now uh we also want to make sure that let's say the form is not valid then we will probably want to inform the user by adding like a pop-up and we can actually do that um what we can do is we can maybe like set a variable called like um validity and if it's equal to false then it can just create like an alert in the uh, page but we're not gonna do that for now maybe later so for now we're just gonna say print error form isn't valid and uh yeah that is that um so that is pretty cool so now our thing has been added our thing should be added to the database um so let's see so uh we there is actually some extension i believe that you can install in vs code to uh look into um db files and sqlite files and all the database files um I know there is one in PyCharm. Um, I I use PyCharm a lot, and I I do use that. So you can enable if you're using PyCharm, then you can. I think there's like an extension built in or something. I'm not sure. You can search for it as well. Um, but in here, let's just look for SQLite. Okay, so uh, what we can do for this is we can say uh, we can go to the command palette or whatever. I believe that's what it's called. So let's go to yeah command palette. Wait, let's search up SQLite um, open database. So let's actually go to uh, the database here. All right, so install that extension, the SQLite extension. And then because this .db, um, this database is an SQLite database. Um, so let's just go to, uh, where was it? View command palette, SQLite open database, host.db. SQLite Explorer. Let's go. All right. So, all right. So, no posts have been created just yet, but that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to attempt to do that. So, let's go back to uh, this. Let's go back to the home page. Let's go to create a post. Let's, uh, Joe, hola, como estas, post. All right. Now let's check in our post database again. Let's refresh. Okay. Oh, it did create it. Uh, ID one because it's the first it's the first post ever. Uh, username Joe and text Hola como estas. So yes, uh, this does work and yeah, it's pretty 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 damn simple, right? So, um, we're just going to do one more thing and then we're going to end the video off here. So what we're going to do is, um, we are going to actually display, display these, um, these, uh, these items or these posts, uh, we're going to display them, uh, on the front end. All right. So that's actually really simple as well, uh, because of Jinja templating. Remember we talked about that. It is amazing. It like, you know what? flask i don't know what flask i don't know why people will use flask without jinja templating it's amazing so uh, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna say um in our index.html um in here we're just gonna pass in in this home route uh first of all we're we're basically in our home route we are going to want to just uh display literally every single post there is right so um that's not pretty efficient for now maybe you want to display maybe like the first 10 posts um but for now um i think that'll be fine so we're just going to do post equal to post dot query dot all so what this will do is um this will uh let's, let's just name it posts actually because it's gonna be multiple posts and plus we already have variable called post and stuff so it's just gonna get really messy um 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say posts is equal to post our query dot all, and this will just uh, query every single post there uh, there is every single post that exists, and it's gonna store that in this post variable. Um, so this is gonna be an iterable. So let's just say posts is equal to posts, and boom! Now we are we have literally every single post there is stored in this posts variable. Now, since we pass it in over here, we can access it in index.html. And since it's an iterable, uh, we can just loop over it. So we can say something like, uh, all right, for, for, uh, for post in posts and for, and for, and, um, we can say, that we want to display um post dot uh post dot let me just check here post dot username and post dot text so for each post we want to display those let's go back let's refresh boom we got joe which is the username and ola comos dos i know it looks really it looks like it was made in like 1995 or something it looks very old it looks really trash right now it's not formatted um but we can actually like create tables and stuff um actually um we are probably not gonna do that right now we are probably gonna do that in the next video but in bootstrap you know sneak peek in the next video i guess you can actually create these tables which is kind of insane, and uh, that's where that's where we're actually going to be using. So we're going to be doing that later. But yeah, that works. Now, uh, what's so cool about this is let's just create another post. So Bill, um, hello, post. Then boom, now it says Bill, hello. Now let's create another one. Let's say um, Hannah, hi, post, Bill right so it's really cool um sqlite is really nice um and yeah that is how you connect the front end to the back end that's how you connect forms to databases and all of that so hope y'all enjoyed this video if you did um please leave a like uh if you want to see more programming tutorials then uh, make sure to subscribe if you you know want me to create some other videos uh then please leave suggestions in the comment section below uh, otherwise, I will see you on the next one. Uh, have an amazing rest of your day.